Hi everybody, it's Claire and Jerry again, and we are gonna continue our talk on homeschooling. Today we're specifically gonna go over some different styles of homeschooling. We'll get into curriculum, we'll talk about what our homeschools look like individually. And so Jerry, can you tell us or help, let's start talking about the styles of homeschooling. Before I got into homeschooling, I didn't even know there was a, a plethora of different right. ways that you could homeschool. Right. So can you talk to us about some of the differences and some of the styles, please? Right, so on one side, you're gonna have like your unschoolers. Okay. If you haven't heard of that term before, um, you know, it's more like, it's more child-led learning. There's okay. not a whole lot of structure. So this okay. this might, you know, work for families that are more free-flowing. Right. and maybe and, smaller kids. Right, and especially if your kids have a hunger to learn, this could really uh, work for you. Right. And then on the opposite end, you're going to have something that looks more like the public school, like okay. sitting down, like a lot of structure. Okay, worksheets. Workbooks, yeah, lots of stuff like that. Okay. And just kind of more time-oriented. It may take longer than some. Okay. Or, yeah, Very then, compartmentalized subjects yes. with that one, probably. Yes. And then in the middle, you're going to kind of have more of a flow, which is where I would think that a bulk of the homeschoolers Absolutely. kind of fall somewhere in the middle of right. that. I, it's important to stress that with any of these styles, you don't have to pick just one. Exactly. You might pick one for a certain subject because it lends well to that, like math lends mm -hmm. well to a traditional worksheet in lots of instances. Mm -hmm. But maybe for something else, you wanna do a unit study or something that is really not structured because that's how your kids are going to um, mm -hmm. appreciate what they're learning more. Right. So you pick what works for you, what Jerry's homeschool and the curriculum that she's picked mm -hmm. looks way different than what I've picked, but it works for them and ours mm -hmm. works for us. So that's really important to know. You don't have to just pick one. Right, and and your homeschool will grow and look different. Absolutely. Just like, you know, when you were given the right. baby, a brand new baby, your first baby, ah, oh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Homeschooling is kind of the same way. Right. You don't know what you're doing. We didn't either when we started, <laughs> did we, Claire? <laughs> Um, no. Well, I thought I did, but I really didn't. I didn't. I was super structured. I was, you know, and luckily most firstborns are pretty type A, and maybe this is why they're type A, because, you know, I wanted him to do this worksheet and this worksheet and this worksheet, and we needed to be done at this time. And by the time my little faith is here now, it's, you know, we get it done, mm -hmm. but it's very much on our own time schedule. Right. So it's important to know that it will evolve over time and that's a really good thing. Right, and um, if I could give you a peek into what our homeschool looks like. Yeah. First, so this, I'm nearing the, the end of my second year homeschooling, but let me scoot back. So last year when I started, we were really organized. Like we started at eight o'clock, Every morning, we did our time together. We did this, and then, you know, we, we kind of rotated. Like, we did history Monday and Wednesday. Wow, you were really we did scheduled. science on Tuesday okay. and Thursday. We, we, we did, you know, it only took us about an hour and a half back then. And, and, okay. But we kind of did that, and we had our routine, and, and we did it. Right. This year has been a little bit crazier. Um, my kids are reading a little bit better this year, and so they're, you know, I'm able to give them a little bit more free reign. But, but about halfway through the year, you know, my husband was dealing with like a health issue, and then okay. now coming into this pandemic stuff, it's kind right. of just changed us a little, okay. which this will happen no matter what. Right, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and so this time I've kind of just, okay, you guys do this stuff. My my youngest child, she's mm -hmm. four, she's been getting up later, and so that's kind of changed stuff. So I'm like, you you boys, you just kind of do this what you can do, rotate through what you right. can do, then come find me, yes. and we'll do all our stuff together. And so I still do the bulk of the reading for okay. them, like as their literature, because right. it's it's um, it's significantly higher than their grade level, right. so they can't quite read at that level yet. Right. Although one of them is starting to, and I'm giving him the book here, you read it, and and. 
as they grow in their reading and in their age and maturity, you'll be able to pass more on to them as well. So it's always changing. Right. Always changing. They're always growing in their independence level. And mm -hmm. ultimately, that's what we want. Because mm -hmm. if we, with a sixth grader, have to sit down and do every single thing, mm -hmm. um, you're not getting anything else in your life done. And right. those other things are important, too. Mm -hmm. So that is a really good point. I know my homeschool every year looks different because again they're becoming more independent this year what it looks like i have a second grader a sixth grader an eighth grader and then a sophomore in high school so i have kind of the whole gamut right. <laughs> um, my second grader requires much more help right um but again her curriculum and what she needs to go through we can get it done within about an hour maybe we'll take an hour and a half if we do a couple extra reading books mm -hmm. And that's not to say that she's only learning for an hour to an hour and a half a day. Every single thing we do with our kids, right. just running our household, making dinner, mm -hmm. taking care of the dog, whatever that is, they're learning right. lots and lots. So don't discount um, out of the book learning. Exactly. Absolutely don't discount that. Um, but then my sixth grader and my eighth grader, they are very independent. They need a little bit of help sometimes with math concepts mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, I just help them when they need that and they just work through their checklist. They know what they need to get done every single day. So that is something that while we don't have a strict schedule, we do have a routine mm -hmm. that is set up for sure. And then my 10th grader, he is practically completely independent. In fact, if he doesn't understand a math concept, he won't necessarily come to me. He'll go to YouTube. And that's okay because you know what? That's a resource that is great to pull in for things like that. Um, he also would prefer to get up at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. I'm up at 6 a.m., but I'm doing my devotion, I'm exercising, I'm getting myself ready for the day so I can be available to them. But he likes to start his work right then. And that works for him. It's worked great this year. And that is really the beauty of getting them to be independent, picking your curriculum, and being at home so they can learn in an environment that is positive, they're comfortable there. Um, I can't say what it has done for our family as a whole. Mm -hmm. You can concentrate on teaching them the values that you want. So that's probably off mm -hmm. subject just a little bit, but that's so important for us. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of a glimpse into the styles of homeschooling, how you might pick your curriculum, and also just to emphasize no two homeschools look alike. Right. So do not let that deter you. Again, thanks for joining us today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send an email to jerry at newhc.org. And that was jerry, J-E-R-R-I-E, at newhc.org. Thanks for watching. Thank you.